So probably one of the most annoying features of my scat pack was the four piston Brembo brake squeal. We're gonna have a little fun with this video. Um, this video is from 2016, back when I was first starting out my YouTube channel. And after I did all the work, I did some research to make sure I did it correctly. And of course I made a few mistakes. And uh, so I just shelved the video. But this has been coming up a lot lately, that four piston Brembo brake squeal. And there's nothing wrong with your car, but it's just one of those things where you're rolling up to a stop and you hear that sound. Yep, that's the one. And you just feel like you're rolling up in a jalopy. So here's how we go about fixing this problem. And we're gonna laugh along the way because I was a little bit inexperienced when I was doing this the first time around. We're gonna skip ahead on this video because I've got a lot of videos on how to jack up the car and safely place the jack stand. If you need help with those, go check my video library out. If I remember, I'll leave a link in the description to those so you can uh, check it out. Uh, but right here, we've got the wheel off. And we're ready to roll. Before we get started, uh, we're going to talk about the products to use. I've got a link in the description below to the brake caliper grease that I used in this video. I put it on in 2016, and when I turned the car back in in 2019, I still had no squeak. So it's definitely worth a couple bucks at a cost for this grease. I highly recommend it. Now, the tools I used um, to pop out the caliper pins, I used the center punch, a small hammer, I was super careful because I have my G2 coated calipers here. I didn't want to chip those off with a, you know, with a metal tool. So uh, I got as far as I can go with the center punch. Obviously, the center punch widened out, so I switched over to a square driver that was the same size as the hole. It allowed me to push it all the way out and get this job done quickly. Once you get the first pin out, you're gonna let that retaining clip fall down and just kind of be held in place by the second pin. Um, Good word of advice if you're doing this for 20 bucks you can get a brand new set of retaining clips and pins um, so if you've got some time and you're planning this out it wouldn't hurt to order a set uh, just so you have some fresh shiny pins i wound up reusing the retaining clips and i wound up reusing the pins just clean them down a little bit uh, with a scotch bright pad not sandpaper because we don't want to make them thinner um, but you know i had really low miles in the car when i did this so it wasn't really a big deal All right, now set these parts aside someplace safe, and we're gonna get started on shimmying out the pads. It is a little bit of a pain in the butt, uh, especially if your um, your brakes are, you know, a little bit more compressed. You can move the caliper back and forth and try and loosen up the brakes a little bit. Uh, I did get lucky; I was able to just slide these out with a little bit of effort. All right, so once you got those pads out. Get yourself a nice clean work area to work in. Before you get started with cleaning, you just want to carefully, so you don't bend it, separate the shim from the pad. Now you'll notice here, as I separated the, uh, the shim from the brake pad, that there was pretty much no grease right behind the pad. So what's basically happening is that metal shim is vibrating at a high rate of speed, or this is what I'm assuming, and it's making that high-pitched squeaking sound. Brake cleaner is noxious, so make sure you have on set of goggles, not glasses, because you can get brake cleaner sprayed around the side of your glasses. Um, while you're cleaning it off, one of the mistakes I made, and it's something I read about after the fact, was that you're not supposed to get brake cleaner on the brake pads themselves. So when you're doing this, don't do as I do. I didn't cause any issues for me. I drove the car for another 20 something thousand miles with no problem, but uh, try your best to keep that brake cleaner off the brake pad itself and only use it on the back of the pad to clean off the grease. Now you don't really need to watch me clean both pads, you get the point. But one of the things I wanted to show you is I removed the shim from the second pad. There was a label, no grease, not a lot of grease at least, but there was a label, a piece of paper in between the shim and the pad. Again, that creates a gap for that thin metal to vibrate, making that squeaking sound. So I'm assuming it's just that lack of grease that didn't stop the vibration that was causing that squeak. It wasn't something wrong with my brakes. I had plenty of pad left, so I just think it's that gap, that air gap in between the shim and the pad and whatever else going on in there that caused this problem. I'm going to thoroughly clean off the back of the pad, thoroughly clean off the shim, and in between the shim and the pad, we're going to 
lay a very thin but complete coverage of brake caliper grease. Now I find it really important to explain. Um, I spread it out a little thick on the back of this shim, but what I'm doing is I'm getting a lot of that off on my finger. You don't want a big goopy mess because like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, when you press it really hard, like your vehicle does when braking, all that grease is just going to shoot out the sides, again, making a gooey mess. So for me, I put a lot on just to make it easy to spread, but you'll notice that as I go through it, I'm taking a lot of that off with my finger, leaving behind a really thin layer of brake grease. And then on the back side of the shim, uh, where it comes in contact with the pistons, we're only going to lay brake caliper grease in the area that the piston touches. So basically go to the size of the worn in area on the back of the shim showing you where those pistons touch and just go a little bit bigger. If you go too big, brake caliper grease tends to grab dirt, dust and debris and hold on to it. So then you're going to get one big dirty pad. So if you cover the entire back of the shim with grease, it's going to just capture a bunch of gunk and it's just going to be disgusting. So just take your time, draw some nice cute circles, be done with it. All right, if you notice, I didn't put grease anywhere else on these assemblies, just in those two areas I showed you. We're going to put everything back together again. I find it really important to note that the uh, it was really difficult getting the pads back in. So what I wound up doing, and this is on a newer car, had only a couple thousand miles on it, the brake fluid didn't have a chance to get disgusting and dirty, so this is okay for this type of scenario. I wound up popping open the uh, brake fluid reservoir, and I wound up with my thumbs pushing the two pistons in the brake assembly back a little bit to give me some more room. And then again, seal up that brake fluid reservoir. I was able to easily slide the brake pads back into place. All right, we're on the home stretch. So once you have the brake pads back into place, you want to start by sliding the pins in. And don't forget, the uh, pins go through the retaining clip. So you slide those in and you tap them in from the back. When you're sliding them in from the back, just take your time, be careful. You can use a punch to get them all the way in and get them flush. You're gonna to wanna to see those pin tips poking out, basically becoming flush with the front of the brake caliper. If you're using aftermarket pins or whatever, they may be a little longer, a little shorter, just make sure they're seated correctly. The part that holds the entire assembly in place is that clip that goes around the back end of the pin. Right where you're hammering, there's that little uh, piece of metal that spins around. That's what holds this into place. So you want to make sure that is hammered in and holding that pin in place because the rest of that pin is free floating inside of there. And obviously, take it out, test it somewhere, make sure you test braking in a safe area. And basically, that's it. Hopefully, you guys get to enjoy many, many miles of squeak free braking like I did. And if this video does help you out, don't forget to gently press that like button. If you're stopping by for the first time, consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.